The economic impact of the Treaty of Versailles was crushing. Germany lost 13% of her territory, 10% of her population, 15% of her land, 75% of her iron, and 68% of zinc ore, 26% of her coal resources, the entire Alsatian potash and textile industries, and a communication system built around Alsace-Lorraine and Upper Silesia. Huge amounts of ships and shipping facilities and of railway rolling stock were delivered to the Allies. The incoming government had no choice but to sign the treaty, but were accused by some, General Ludendorff for example, of stabbing the German people in the back. Politicians had, lo had lost the war rather than the army. The Treaty of Versailles triggered a number of political reactions. First, the government of the day resigned, having refused to sign it. I will not sign this treaty! Auf Wiedersehen! I'm the incoming government. I will not sign this treaty! Okay, I will. The economic and political impact of the Treaty of Versailles on the Weimar Republic. The Weimar Republic faced many problems, but perhaps the greatest danger was the weakness within. The, the Constitution gave the President, the States and the Army too much power, whilst proportional voting meant that the Reichstag was divided and weak. In 1919-1923, extremists on both the left and the right tried to overthrow the government. The occupation of the Royal between 1923 and 1925 by troops from France and Belgium was a response to the failure of the Weimar Republic under Chancellor Wilhelm and to pay rep reparations in the aftermath of World War I. Right from the start, the Weimar Republic was doomed because of the re rebellion and revolts. One of the biggest revolts was the Spartacus Revolt. The Spartacus wanted Germany to be run by the councils, which the sailors and workers had set up. The Social Democrats supported Friedrich Ebert and wanted, and wanted an elected parliament to make decisions about the country's future. The Weimar Constitution were basic laws of a country. It was how it is set up. The Weimar Constitution, Constitution made Germany a republic. The Weimar government was made up of the Reichsstadt which was the upper house and it could delay measures passed by the Reichstag. The Reichstag was the new German parliament which was elected by proportional representation. The president was Friedrich Ebert. He was, the, he was elected every seven years and he was head of the army and chose the chancellor. What were the problems with the Weimar constitution? There were lots of different political parties in the Reichstag. Laws were passed much more slowly because it was hard to get all the different parties to agree. It was hard to pick a Chancellor who had the support of most of the Reichstag. It wasn't very popular among the German people because they had to accept the Versailles Treaty and the War Guilt Clause. There were many outbreaks of violence resorting in the Ebert forming Free Corps which were violent soldiers to keep the peace. The government was based in a small southern German town which was far away from the violence in Berlin. They had to take on opposition from communists. There was a lot of political unrest. When Germany wasn't producing any goods, Germany's economy started to suffer. The striking workers had to be paid and the people expelled, expelled from their homes had to, be, had to be looked after. The German government then did the worst thing possible. They, start, they printed more money to cover the cost. This signaled to the outside world that Germany did not have enough money to pay for her day-to-day -day needs. Millions of people faced starvation. The more money that the German government printed, the faster the prices went up. 
The faster the prices went up, the faster people spent their wages. Workers were paid twice a day, and when they were given their wages, they threw bundles of banknotes out of factory windows to waiting family members, who would then rush to the shops to buy food, coal or clothes before the prices went up again. Pensioners who were living on fixed incomes found that, their price, that prices rose much faster than their earnings. So even if they could afford to buy food, they might not be able to pay for the gas to cook it. The Occupation of the Ruhr Germany failed to keep up with its reparation payments. In, re in retaliation, France invaded and occupied an industrial region of Germany called the Ruhr in 1923. The League of Nations didn't intervene. The United States helped resolve the situation with the Dawes Plan. France withdrew from the Ruhr in 1925. Why did France occupy the Ruhr? Germany had to agree to pay war reparations of 132 billion gold marks, which is 6.6 .6 billion pounds. They didn't have a choice in the matter. If they didn't pay, the Allies would invade, so Germany scraped together their first instalments which was all they could pay. Some of the first instalment was in the form of gold, the rest in goods such as coal, iron and wood. In 1922, the Germans failed to pay the second instalment. The French didn't believe the Germans, so they decided to take matters into their own hands and take what they were owed by force. They invaded Germany and occupied the Ruhr Valley. The, rich, the richest industrial area there were five French divisions and one Belgian division. What did the French do? They took over coal mines, railways, factories and steelworks. They set up machine gun posts overlooking town squares. They took food and supplies. <laughs> they put anyone who did not cooperate in prison. How did the German government react to the invasion? They gave these orders to people who lived in the Ruhr. The action of the French government in the Ruhr area is a gross violation of international law and of the Treaty of Versailles. As a consequence, all orders given to German officials in the course of this action are legally invalid. The German government therefore orders all its officials not to obey the instructions of the occupying forces. Basically, the government was telling the rural workers not to work for the French and to put up passive resistance. How did the French react to these orders? <laughs> the French shot and killed 13 and wounded many more who worked in the Krupp steelworks when they refused to take orders. They expelled people from the Ruhr when they didn't cooperate. Over the 18-month period, they killed 132 and expelled 150,000 from their homes.